Welcome to another session of Geek Out with Perry. Last time, we discussed how improving I.O. efficiency gets us closer to providing large, low-cost mailboxes. Today, we're continuing the conversation. As Perry discussed last time, I.O. efficiency is a component of a suite of investments that Exchange is making to achieve this vision. Another area is data protection. So Perry, to some IT pros, large mailboxes can be really scary. True. Uh, certainly uh, uh, one of the scariest things and uh, the things that get an IT pro fired the fastest is losing a whole pile of data. And uh, with older technologies, that risk uh, got bigger as the amount of data you're managing uh, grew. So um, uh, starting in sort of halfway through Exchange 2003 uh, release cycle, it's about eight years ago, um, we started uh, thinking hard about how to shift the uh, storage paradigm uh, to make it a lot easier to manage large mailboxes. You could see this growth in uh, disk drives and the opportunity, but uh, it was clear that you needed to go to a, a new paradigm if you really want to dramatically change the size of mailboxes. So how did we change that? One of the biggest problems with backup is the sort of the time it takes to do a backup. Uh, last time we talked about uh, I.O. being a key contributor to long latencies for users, it's really difficult to run your backup during the middle of the day because it's such an I.O. intensive operation. So you have to do your backups in this time window during the middle of the night when people aren't, aren't doing any working. So your backup window really is restricted the six to eight hour time frame. But when you're doing backups, you have to really copy every piece of data on the system to your backup. That's the model. So as your mailboxes get larger, you start running out of time. You can actually be impossible to finish if you make your mailboxes sufficiently big. In a re replication model, uh, which we moved to with Exchange 2007 and Exchange 2010, the data is uh, replicated immediately when it arrives. Okay. So there are essentially no backup window. It's constantly happening. And uh, so you can big, put a big non-A here. You never run into this issue of having your backup windows um, overlay with user uh, operations, and you're constantly um, uh, keeping your data backed up. Which then leads nicely into these, these two terms here. These are two fairly technical terms within the industry that are about how you're going to design your data protection strategy. Um, uh, uh, restore time objective, restore point objectives are sort of fancy ways of talking about the length of time it takes to recover your system after a failure and how much data you're going to lose uh, uh, when you've done your recovery process. So let's talk about RTO first. This is how long does it take to get your system back up and running. In a backup world, um, you've got a set of tapes or even data on a set of disk drives if you did it a sort of more online backup. But it takes a long time to copy all that data back mm -hmm. to a production server and then turn it on and get it ready for users. And this can take hours to days depending on the size of the mailbox. Again, it's proportional to the size of the mailbox you give to people. So your, your problem gets 10 times bigger if you make your mailbox and 10 you times larger. And more data. Right. With a replication model, you have a number of different copies available to you that you can essentially fail over to in a constant amount of time. And we think this constant amount of time is 30 seconds. And we have validated that within our own deployment at Microsoft, with the services we offer to other companies, mm -hmm. and with uh, working with uh, early uh, deployments uh, for customers. So um, this window is short enough that, especially if you're running in cache mode, most users won't even notice the time it takes to fail over. OK. Uh, the report restore point objective is how much data you likely lose in this rare, rare case in which you, you think you've lost all your disk drives or your SAN okay. had a bug in it or something. With a backup, if you're doing your backups nightly, um, you're going to expect about a 12 hours of data loss because mm -hmm. it's on average, it'll be 12 hours since the last time you uh, backed it up. With some snapshot technologies, you can probably get this down to an hour or two, but it's difficult to get it even down to minutes. In the replication world, we think this is, gets very close to zero. Essentially, as each email gets in, it's replicated to all the different copies. All of this adds up to a much more reliable and available system, okay. but it's also dramatically cheaper because 
there's so many terms here that are not proportional to the size of your mailbox. Okay. They're really just proportional to the rate at which mail flows in. So now you can enable people to keep their mail for a lot longer, reference it, not have to worry about backing it up in their PSDs and take advantage of some of these other things that we'll be talking about later uh, because it's all on the server. Um, so all that's goodness, but dramatically cheaper mm -hmm. uh, because most of those terms are now independent of the size of the mailbox, whereas the backup, it's proportional to mailbox size, mm -hmm. right? And again, we think we've got a constant term here that is, in many cases, almost free. Uh, and the key thing there is, we think in a properly designed system, the number of disk drives that uh, you use for this replication model is comparable to the number of disk drives you would have in this model anyway, just to protect you from ever having to use your backup. Well, that's great. Thank you, Perry. Well, that's it for this Geek Out with Perry. We hope you find this information useful. So please feel free to leave us comments and look for another Geek Out with Perry in the next few weeks.